So here it is, my tiny house. This is probably the thing I get asked about most by everyone in my life. <laughs> What's going on with your tiny house? How did you build it? You built a tiny house? Oh my gosh, you have a tiny house? So when you enter the tiny house, you come into the living room area. These lights have a dimmer switch. So if you wanna set the mood in here. In this corner of the living room, we have the office. And this chair duels as storage and footrests. Tucked right here is the vacuum cleaner. Vacuum cleaner is essential for a tiny house. And this thing fits right back there. Obviously that's the couch. And across from the couch, I have a mount for a TV and then I would tuck all of the cords that would go from the TV down to here. It gave this nice aesthetic. So you wouldn't see all the wires and stuff hanging down. Bookshelves slash DVD shelves or whatever you want in there. These hooks right here were for all my backpacks. Every one of these windows has blackout shades. So when you close all of them, it gets pretty dark in here. Let me close all of them. The windows upstairs also have blackout shades. So it would get even darker if I close those. Underneath the couch, this is where I would keep my shoes. They have a little lifted area in them, so, you know, I could put wet shoes or boots down there. You could store a lot of shoes under there and then back behind if you wanted to. So that was the living room. We covered all the bases there. Now we enter the kitchen. Kitchen slash laundry room. On the couch side, we've got this custom countertop that I cut here to match <laughs> all the appliances and shelving that are on this side. It's got a couple drawers here. Those are the junk drawers. Storage. Mini fridge. This is a combo washer dryer. WD2100XC. It does really small loads, but if you use it like it's supposed to be used for small loads, it does a really good job. That's the hookups for the hot and cold water for the washer and dryer. This is storage for uh, laundry stuff. There's some cubbies over here as well. Extra storage up here. There's a microwave. Every jacket and hoodie that I owned fit on this bar right here when I used to live in here. Right beneath that, we have the breaker box for all the electrical breakers in the house. Each one of them's labeled what they're all for. So that was the laundry room side. Oh, yeah, this is just kind of a neat thing for extra storage. More aesthetic than anything. I just thought it was a cool addition. That spot looked kind of blank, so I added that in there. The other side over here is where the cooking goes down. Four burner, propane stove, and oven. Right next to the stove, there's extra storage. I used to keep all my canned food and random stuff, like oatmeal and stuff, inside here. This is to hang your pots and pans. This is a knife magnet. This is for random stuff. Above that, I have a fan. It's actually just a bathroom fan, but it's it works pretty well. Above the kitchen sink, I've got these lights pointed in all different directions. This is where I kept my cups. Kitchen sink, obviously. Paper towel holder. And then lots of storage here. Plates, cups, silverware. Garbage would go down there. And these are deep drawers here. So you can fit a lot of stuff in here. Down here was my meat freezer. This whole freezer in here is dedicated to just pretty much my frozen uh, meat and frozen berries for smoothies and stuff. So we'll go upstairs in a bit, but this right here 
is where the ladder goes. So right now the ladder is in storage position, but it has three sets of hooks. The first hook is for storage. The second set of hooks is for climbing up to the sleeping loft. And the third set of hooks is for the storage loft. Coming up to the storage loft, we've got the hot water heater and just extra storage space here. Actually, a snowboard fits really well right there. <laughs> Move the ladder back to storage position. Now let's check out the bathroom. The bathroom has a pocket door here. You've got a full body mirror here if you wanna check yourself out in the morning. Make sure you're looking good before you head out of the tiny house. Oh, also, this is my pull-up bar. It's pretty strong. I used to put some resistance bands around there and I would get my workout on. Oh. Okay, so now let's check out the bathroom. Blackout shade in the bathroom too. So here is the toilet. Here is the sink. Some storage down there. Two shelves and inside the mirror, there's storage. Sink works. Shower is over here on this side, and then there's extra storage here. All of my towels there. And this is a laundry basket. I actually never finished framing it out and building a basket to go in here, but uh, that's what that's for. Strip down, take off all your dirty clothes, and then toss them into the laundry basket. And once the laundry basket's full, you throw them into the washer and dryer. So here's the shower. There's storage for soap and shampoo and stuff up there. Having this type of shower head really helps for cleaning the shower, because you can rinse the whole thing off. Works pretty great. Gets the job done, that's the shower. You just have to be careful when you're using the shower because the water shoots this way. I have these little clips on here that allows you to hook the shower curtain so it will wrap around there and water can't leak out onto the floor. I always remind everybody when they're staying here, the water's gonna shoot out towards this way, so make sure the curtain is in position before you turn on the shower. Oh, and I added kind of a unique touch with the lights in the bathroom. I wanted to do something unique, something cool, so I uh, got this hook and the old school bulbs are just hanging from there pretty cool. I would hang my towel and then extra like dirty clothes, like sweaty running clothes I would hang from there. So that's the bathroom. Oh, I forgot to mention straight above the kitchen, there is this light up here, right there. That helps illuminate the whole tiny house. Okay, now when you head up to the sleeping loft, there's actually a switch right here that turns on the light. So if you come down here in the middle of the night or vice versa, and you want the lights to come on or off, you can switch it on or off at the bottom of the stairs. So let's turn that on. Now we've got lights as we go upstairs. And this is where I used to sleep. I built this frame right here and I had a three inch mattress topper on top of this. And this was my bed. All my clothes fit in these cubbies here on the sides and this was it nice and cozy definitely stayed warm up here in the summertime you definitely want to open up these windows because all the heat goes straight up this becomes kind of a hot box in here but if you crack these open this window that window and that window if you open those three up, it lets the air out and helps cool it down up here. So this switch is for these lights, but this switch right here is for the downstairs lights. When it's the middle of the night, it's pitch black and you gotta go to the bathroom, you can come over here and this is glowing in the dark. So you can see up oh, there's the downstairs switch and you can see when you go downstairs and then you can switch the lights on and off either way you're going. So I'm glad I did that because I utilize that a lot. Oh, and also you can set the mood up here too because there's a dimmer switch 
on these lights. And you can point these in whatever direction you want. So if you're reading a book or something, you can angle them to your desired position. And that's pretty much it. That's the grand tour of the inside of the cabin. So now, let's check out the outside. And I wanna show you how all of the utilities work. So this tiny house is definitely on the grid. It's plugged in to this right here. That plug is connected to my grandparents' house, so it uses the public utilities and the power lines that come down the street. So plug in there and the electricity runs through that into that plug right there. That cord plugs in right there and all the wires go into the tiny house right there. And that's where the breaker box is. That's how I get electricity to the tiny house. Now this front part of the tiny house, this little box here, inside here, and this is hydraulic. As for like a truck hood, these are where the propane tanks are. And you can switch between one or the other. And the gas goes through that yellow pipe right there. And it goes to that pipe. Here's the on off switch for the gas. And then it goes up into the tiny house. The stove is right there. The water is also connected to my grandparents' house. All the plumbing is connected in the crawl space here. So the water comes through this pipe. This is the on off valve. So the water runs through that hose, comes up to the front box of the tiny house. It comes up and goes into this filter first to filter the water. This is the on off switch right before the water enters the tiny house. The bathroom is on the other side of this wall right here. Someday I would like to install a propane on-demand hot water heater instead of the electric one that I have in here and also install a propane stove on the wall where the TV mount is right below that. I think that's a great spot for a propane heater so that if I ever wanted to take this thing to a rural piece of property and be like really off grid. I, I might do that someday. I think that would be really cool. I would really want to make those upgrades before I did that because right now you really need a constant amount of power, which is great the way it is right now because I'm totally on grid. But if I want to go off grid, I think I would want to switch over to a plug that's generator friendly for power, an on demand propane water heater, and install a propane heater. For heat because something I forgot to mention the heat for this tiny house is electric that is the heater right here that heats the whole tiny house and this works great it works awesome but it, it takes a lot of electricity so if you were using a generator you would need to run the generator the whole time you're using that heater and uh, it's just not super efficient so that's where I would put a propane heater right there these blocks are adjusted to the right height so that the tiny house sits level. So it's not tied down. It's not on a concrete pad. It's just blocked and the tires are sitting on the ground. So that's the foundation of the tiny house. So the reason I went to the tiny house today is because I needed to clean it and do some repairs in preparation for a renter. I'm going to have somebody living in it and paying me rent. The tiny house has been vacant for an entire year. After I moved out, I can't live in two places at once. So I just unhooked the water and electricity and propane and I just kind of let it sit. And so it got cobwebs and dirty. And when I just went back a couple days ago, I turned on the water and the kitchen faucet uh, leaked. Plumbing is my favorite thing. It's it's just the best. I love plumbing so much. So much. There's a couple other things that needed fixed and touched up and cleaned. So I spent some time there today doing all of that. When I moved out a little over a year ago now, it felt like it was time to leave that tiny house for a while. I lived in it for five, almost six years. 
and I have so many awesome memories there. Overall, I loved living in that tiny house. I'm a minimalist at heart, and living there requires that you not have very much stuff and things. It was great, I loved it, but it was time to move on because there's good memories there and there's some things that I just wanted to move on from. It's like when you're in a place for so long, you remember the good times and the bad times and that tiny house kind of became a place that kind of locked me in a time period in my life. And in, in order to grow, and move on and do something different in my life and to move my life into a different trajectory, I needed to part ways from it for a while. Everything worked out, not right when I wanted it to. I would say there was a few months where I lived in the tiny house and I was like, man, I don't wanna be here anymore. I just, I wanna move on. I wanna forget about some of these things and I just need to be away from this. I wanna do something different. And it took a little while, but through hard work, I kind of created a situation for myself to be able to move out. So uh, I really haven't been there in a year. Being there today made me fall in love with that place again. <laughs> it reminded me of the building process and what it's like to be there and to live in such a small space. I'm in a much bigger place now. You know, I guess you could call it more normal size. It's not huge, but it's like you know your average American dwelling that people live in I have to say overall I think I like my living situation better now but being back in the tiny house was very nostalgic for me and I actually missed it so I built the tiny house in 2014 finished it in 2015 that was back before I was recording everything on video but I did take pictures along the way so I have photos of the entire build from start to finish during a lot of the build, I had the amazing help of my mom and my stepdad. They taught me everything that I know about carpentry, electrical work, plumbing. I learned everything that I know during the build of that tiny house. I had never built anything before, and they helped me along the way, teaching me how to frame, how to build a roof, how to plumb a toilet. Like <laughs> Literally everything was my first time doing all that stuff. It literally took a calendar year to put it together. And I was just living with my parents at the time. Slowly but surely, I was working during the week and on the weekends, I would work on the tiny house. I was working 24 seven, like 40 hours a week. And then Saturdays and Sundays, I was working on building the tiny house. And after a year, it was done. 